tonight heads to Hiram as the Mountain Crest Mustangs take on the Bear River Bears from over the mountain. Bear River comes in with an 8 and 4 mark. Mountain Crest is 500 team at 4 and 4, but the Mountain Crest schedule has been brutal. They have wins over Timview, Layton, Brighton, and Northridge, but they've played uh, Fremont, Weaver, Davis, and Corner Canyon. Every one of those teams has a winning record. So Mountain Crest will be ready for Region 5 action, that's for sure. But tonight against the Bears, as we mentioned, who are 8 and 4, they're going to have three guys they need to slow down. Cole Franck, McCade Mitten, and Jordan Sanchez, all averaging 11 points a game plus for the Bears. Now for the Mustangs, it starts and ends with Jackson Brenchley, the sophomore, can score, he can rebound, he can assist the ball, and he's one of the steals leader in the state. And he's just a sophomore. Stick around for all the action. The Game of the Week is coming up next. I am a cyclist. So you cyclist. I am a cyclist. Victoria. I train for it. I sacrifice for it. While they play, I train. I conquer roads others can't. You're driven to be the best, so you should train on the best. The 2014 Proform TDF, the official training bike of the Tour de France. It's the ultimate cyclist's training experience. With iFit and Google Maps, you'll ride the Tour. Choose any stage of the Tour or nearly every road on Earth and dig in. You'll see, feel and ride the Tour. Climb like never before. Courchevel, Galibier, even Elp d'Huez. Only the TDF gives you a 20% incline and decline. See it all right in front of you on our 7-inch color touchscreen. And train with power with our advanced power meter. With a TDF, you can ride almost every road on the planet. You can get the TDF with zero down. Get yours today. Train better tomorrow. I am a cyclist, and this is where I train. Bear River against Mountain Crest in a round ball rivalry. And it's brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cash Valley, it's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Cash Valley Electric, a tradition of excellence since 1915. Mountain Star Cash Valley Hospital, not bigger, just better. Lewiston State Bank, strong and vibrant for over a century. New smile, keep your teeth with experienced dental care. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Lynn's Audio and Video, Cash Valley's audio and video specialist. Nyman Funeral Home, our family serving your family. Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you've been missing. Cherry Peak Resort, just minutes away to play. Top of Utah Spas, Utah's newest jacuzzi dealer. And Valley Home Store and Valley Outlet, to both worlds, eclectic design and an exceptional price. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's television station. Well, welcome to the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Mountain Crest hosting Bear River. I'm Eric Olson, along with Lee Vaughn, the Mustangs on the board early, Lee, as we're just underway here. Two points, John Huff, he's the senior leader on this team. And uh, he's averaging over 10 points a game this season. Mountain Crest four and four on the season. Bear River eight and four. And Mountain Crest hasn't played a game since December 19th. Oh my goodness. Bear River got back in the action the other day, uh, December 30th, and beat their longtime rivals, the Box Elder Bees, by three points. 50, uh, more than that, 64 57. Brenchley with a block on the defensive end, then a miss on the offensive end by the Mustangs. And it's off of Mountain Crest, and we're going the other way. Brenchley averaging 18 points a game. He will fill up the stat sheet. Six oh, rebounds, uh, five assists, and a steal and a half team, per uh, game. Nethercock with the foul. They called on Mountain Crest. Bear River starters tonight, not all that tall. You got Riley, Sanchez, Mitten, Buse, and Hartfield. Three on the way and good Jaylen by Jalen Teague. Teague's Three ninth three-pointer on the year. Tenth three-pointer. Nine coming into this game. Mountain Crest starting five was Teave, Albrechtson, Nethercott, Huff, and Brenchley. Two oh. Nethercotts on the team now. We got a sophomore and a junior. A miss from point blank range by the Bears. Mitten couldn't finish. 
And the Mustangs with a 5-0 advantage two minutes into this first period. And the ball. Teeve hit a three-pointer a minute ago. Now they work it back down inside. Heather caught a little bit of trouble, so Albrechtson takes it out, and they reverse to Brenchley. Brenchley, baseline, stop and go back out front to Teeve. And they'll reset the offense. And if you line these two teams up next to each other, you'd think that Mountain Crest would blow them out because of their height advantage. But really, Bear River has three double-digit scores on their team. Albertson's three rims out. And here come the Bears. As you mentioned, four and four. They finished tied for first in Region 11 in 3A last year. Now now they go to the big man, McCade Mitten. Turns, nothing there. Tries to follow, and it's out of bounds off of Mountain Crest. These two teams in a couple of years, I would assume, Lee, are going to get very familiar with each other. Mountain Crest going to 5A for the next two years, but when they split the high schools, you would think that that would make logical these, sense. These yeah. Valley schools would probably end up 3A and play in Bear River twice a year in basketball, but that's still two years away. I'll have to see what happens. I'm really looking forward to that. I hope they do that. That'd be five schools in this valley and one just over the hill. That's that save your travel budget. Yeah. <clears throat> Bear River looking for a shot. Lee mentioned a big size advantage for Mountain Crest and a nice up and under move by Mitt. Basket McCain, Mitten. So Bear River gets on the board. Nethercott down low, off the glass and in. Nethercott. Nethercott's strong with that hoop. He takes the hit from behind and still puts it in, no call. Better an officiating crew on the floor tonight. Three on the way, and it's good. So Bear River flying <coughs> back Tristan into this Hatfield. thing, and Hartford puts it in. Tristan Hartford. Brinchley's shot short, Nethercott with the follow, and he's fouled on the rebound. He'll go to the line with Cole Franck. It picks up the infraction. Here's a look. Brenchley a little short. And this is kind of what you expect to see after you have a couple of weeks of layoff. <laughs> Start off with maybe a few errant passes and a few short buckets. With a couple of major holidays in there. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't get time to talk to the coaches before the game. I was going to ask Coach Bookmiller, how do you get him fired up after that huge layoff? <laughs> One out of two. for the Mustangs, and they lead 7-5. Should be 8-5, now they've changed it. Another three on the way from the Bears, off the front of the iron, and Brenchley with the board. Brenchley, we saw him a lot as a freshman last year, and you could tell he was finding his way as a young 14-year-old, and now he's the ripe old age, probably of 15. <laughs> but. A year of varsity experience, you can't replace that. He's a great ball player. Ooh, Huff thought about that just for a second. <laughs> he thought what it would happen to him, he misses it. Oh! <laughs> he thought twice and it was a good thing. Build his confidence. Two triples for the Mustangs in this first period, and they leave a lead 11-5. Bear River, they'll, they'll shoot the long ball, and they're a team that has to use quickness because they don't have the size. They didn't return any starters from last year. As Lee mentioned, they're 8-4 early in the season. Teeve has it knocked away, kicks it back out to Huff. He sides against the three and drives. Teeve in the corner, three ball. Too long, rebound, fought for it out of bounds off of Bear River We're going the other way as Frank couldn't control. Teeve didn't really take his time and line that one up. He just kind of threw it at the hoop and hoped it would go in. Here's that shot you can see, just didn't really line up, get, didn't get his guide hand on the ball very well and shoots it long, hoping for a rebound and, and certainly Mountain Crest should have the rebound edge tonight. 
kind of rushed it a little, didn't he? Yeah. So Mountain Crest goes bigger now with Tanner Kirby on the floor. He's six seven. And and uh, and he had a plenty of meat at Christmas dinner, I think. You betcha. He takes up a lot of room, and there he is running down the court in front of everybody. And it's out of bounds off of Bear River. If you get a look at 50, that's Kirby. You can see him there kind of in the middle of your picture. He's, he's a big guy, long arms. Teeves three won't go, rebounded out of there by Hartfield. Bronk, three, short, rebound, Kirby. Bronk shot that one from his hip, didn't really get good extension on it. Kind of double clutch, didn't he? Yeah. Brenchley, double team, kick it out to Huff, three, won't go, rebound by Sanchez. Oh. <laughs> Near steal by the Mustangs. Albertson was trying to dig it out of there, and Albertson gets his hands on it again, and it's Teeve that comes up with it. Kirby out front, but he can't flag it down. That one just didn't come up off the floor for him. Albertson doesn't show any steals for the entire season. He almost had three right there. Well, you could credit him with that one as he knocked it away, and his teammate picked it up. And yep. Kirby just couldn't quite run it down. The bounce pass just didn't come up off the floor. Brenchley's the thief here. He's got 12 steals on the season. He's a prolific pilfer. Backdoor Sanchez guy. Sanchez. 11-7, Mountain Crest with the four point lead. Mountain Crest has played a tough preseason schedule. We'll talk about it in a break. Another three on the way as the Mustangs will shoot the triple. Brenchley rebound, put back, won't go, but he'll go to the line. It was Sam Adams that missed. Foul is on Walker, his first. Jackson Brenchley. Right. Right. Walker picks up the foul. Well, one thing that'll make Mountain Crest a lot tougher when they get the region play, as you mentioned, is they played a lot of 5A teams in their, in their openers. Fremont, and Davis, and Weber. Now, Brenchley, one facet of his game that was a struggle last year was his free throw shoot. Kind of a rodeo sometimes. <laughs> and I know that was something talking to people around the program that they've worked with him on, and he hits the first two that he takes tonight and extends that Mountain Crest lead to six at 13 7. 22 seconds to play in the first period. Bear River looking like they're going to play for the last shot. Mountain Crest pressure. Oh, a little scoop shot off the iron. Rebounded out of there by the Mustangs as Walker couldn't connect. This one knocked out of bounds with 3.4 seconds. Okay, stop that clock Left a little on early. The clock and the home clock. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the clock stopped as the ball crossed stopped the free throw just line. before the whistle. <laughs> the lob into Kirby. Kirby brings it down. Can't do that. Times are running and it runs out on the Mustangs, but they own a 13 7 lead. Over the Bear River Bears as we head in. We'll have you on that knee in no time. This afternoon, in fact, Okay, let's take that first step. Put your weight on it. You're doing terrific, Scott. At Cache Valley Hospital, what makes us better makes you better. Cache Valley Hospital, the newest member of the Mountain Star Healthcare family. Back at Mountain Crest High School, Eric Olson along with Lee Vaughn and a cast of hundreds, if not thousands. Mountain Crest to bring you the game of the week. Doing a great job playing defense against Bear River, not giving him easy shots. Like I mentioned earlier, there's three scorers on Bear River's team that average in double digits. Jordan Sanchez 
averaging over 11 points a game. McCade Mitten, almost 11 points a game. And Cole Franck, 14 and a quarter. So those three guys who can fill it up, but uh, having a tough time getting going now against Mountain Crest. Well, let's look at that preseason schedule that we mentioned. Okay, Bear River with wins over Morgan, Summit Academy, North St. Pete, Minico, Idaho, Bonneville, Filer, Idaho, South Summit, and Box Elder. They lost to 5A Fremont. They lost to Logan, who's having a heck of a start to the year. They lost to Ogden, and they lost to Bear Lake over there in the Montpelier area. For the Mustangs, they lost to Fremont. They're 6-4. and four. They lost to Weber, another 5A school that's 6-3. and three. They lost to Davis, a perennial 5A power that's 7-2, and two, and Corner Canyon that's 5-4. and four. They beat Timview at 6-4, Leighton that's 4-5, and five, but better than that record indicates is a three on the way, and good by Sanchez. And they beat Brighton at 6-5, and, and Northridge, Northridge, their lone kind of blemish at 3-5. and five. Northridge has kind of struggled a little bit, but that's most of the, they've played most of the region that they're going to play, they're going to be in next year. <laughs> Sanchez now with five points as he draws the Bears to within three. Kirby has to go get that one as the pass was tipped. That's a good look. The Mustangs answer. Askin Schwab. Tanner Schwab, junior, number one with the shot. Quarterback on the yeah. football team. Hartfield knocked off balance. Gives it up to Front. They're looking inside to Mitten, but. Well, you got another caught in Kirby there. There's not a lot of room in the middle. Yeah, there's nothing doing. Playing a drop off man where Kirby's got his man, but he keeps dropping back into the middle of the paint. All those long arms floating in there. It's like trying to hit the. Uh, the windmill hole at the mini golf. <laughs> oh, there it is. is. Good job by Mitten to spin under the long arm okay. of Kirby. Mitten with four and Bear River hanging around. 15 12, Mountain Crest with the lead. Six minutes to play in the first half. Nethercott looking for Kirby. Pass. Not a good pass at all, and Sanchez comes up with it. I think what made that pass worse is halfway through it, he decided to stop, and it was too late. Banks closed as Riley Walker tried to go glass. Comes Brenchley. He's surrounded, and he's hammered. It's probably going to be a foul on 25 Hartfield. Mm -hmm. That's who they called it on. Foul was on Hatfield. 13 foul. Tristan Hartfield picks up his second. Now the EP announcer is calling him Hatfield, and I know there's a bunch of them over in Box Elder County, so it's possible. <laughs> so if we're messing it up, sorry. We won't tell any of them, of course. Nope. <laughs> They're the ones who gave us our roster. Oh, historical humor. I don't get it. <laughs> Rebound by Mitten. As Brenchley's shot's a little too hard off the glass. So Bear River with a chance to pull within one or tie it up. Stepped in a hole. Yeah, Walker had a little trouble coming around that screen. Nice board by Brenchley. That gives you such an advantage when your ball handler can rebound too and you get down court. Yeah, and when he's six foot six. How tall is he? What do they list him at? Uh, let's take a look here. Because that's some six four. Six four, that sounds about right. And some long arms. Which means he's really six three. Three on the way, too hard, rebounded by Bear River as Albertson's shot was a little long. Bear River again with a chance to tie it up on a three ball. 15-12 advantage for the Mustangs. It's a nice kick. Down low looking for Mitten. Mitten surrounded, trying to decide what he's going to do. He goes left and hits. But Mitten's owning the interior of that key tonight. Hey, Mitten. 
six four, and he's going against six six and six seven under there. Chris Jansen, number twenty one, looks at the bench like, man, I need a little help on that drop step. <laughs> and that's really what they should do. They should suck over to that side and have somebody come from the weak side. There's Albrechtson again off the glass. Won't go. Everybody Rebound, in, put back, won't go. Everybody in uh, Bear River thinks that a jump stop is a travel. Which it is not. Which it is not. You can take a step and a jump stop. Yep. It looks like one. Sure does. But it's not. So before you go yell at the officials, learn the rules, and otherwise you look silly. Down low, Mitten going to work, turns right, misses and rebounded by oh. Brenchley. Chris Jansen held his ground that time. Brenchley all the way in, nice leaves kick. it off for Chris Jansen, and he'll go to the line. Nice kick by Brenchley, draw the traffic to him, and then he kicks it out to Carter. Chris Jansen gets fouled. So Huff will come back in. Or Mountain Crest as Nethercott sits. Brenchley's going to take a seat as well, and Teve will come in. Walker sits down for the Bears. And Bridger Buse on the floor. Just chance and hits a free throw. And it's the Mustangs by a bucket at 16-14. Three minutes to play in the first half. Slow pace in this one, Lee. I kind of feel like Mount Chris would like to get out and run, and Bear Rivers trying to keep the pace a little slower. Well, you said it, and that's really not a good play right there in a travel and called by the back official. Tanner Schwab kind of got into trouble, and he had nowhere to go with it. And he took a couple of steps before he could get rid of that ball. Usually the best thing that to do was is the, to stop. That was the Jameis Winston play of the night right there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a train wreck. I loved every minute of it. Ugh. Another shot falling short and a rebound foul. Buse runs into Huff. Foul on number 11. Mountain Crest still leading by two. They've only scored three points here in this quarter. Huff hits a two. Couldn't find anybody open. Take it on his own. Huff with seven points. Ten point three eight his average on the year. Down low and getting fouled with Franck, so he'll go to the line. <laughs> it's only a second team foul on Mountain Crest. It is, and Franck averages 14 a game. He's scoreless with two oh, minutes to play in the first half. Chris Jansen picks up the foul. Only five fouls on Bear River, so not a lot of whistles so far in this first half. Franck. You know, my wife would probably punch me in the throat for saying this, but I really like those Bear River uniforms. Uh, I do too, yeah. actually. I think they look sharp. sharp. Yeah. I always like the away uniforms better than the home uniforms. Well, the home ones are always white. That's right. It's no fun. Tronk hits both free throws, and he's on the board with two points. And it's a two-point ball game. The Mustangs with the lead. 18-16. The Mustangs have been outscored 7-5 in this quarter. Nine to five. Nine to five. Scratch that. Yeah. Math. Ah, uh, <laughs> it's really hard. I'm wondering my checkbooks always. I should have taken my shoes off. That's right. Teeves shot wouldn't car them back in, and so it's hauled out of there by Bear River, and they have a chance to tie. Hartfield, too hard, and a whole lot of shaking going on under the bucket, and they're going to call it on Mitten. 
128 to play in the first half. That is second foul? Yes, it is. So now they're going to have to take the big man out. Now they really go small. Looking inside, can't find Brinsley. So they work it around the perimeter some more. Huff looks for a cutter. Cross court pass to Albrechtson. Albrechtson can connect. It's great zone defense by Bear River. They just make him shoot from the outside, pack it in, it helps nullify their height deficit. Buse is fouled and will go to the line with a chance to tie this ball game. The fouls on Huff. That's his first. Mountain Crest has shot four or six free throws in this first half. And Bear Rivers now shot three with number four on the way. Mountain Crest four of six from the line. One more to tie this game. And Bear River ties it. Four of four from the line for the Bears here. All four free throws coming in the second period. Still missing a point in the are. scoreboard. Should be tied at 18, and it is. Brenchley. Boy, off balance. Shot won't go. Christiansen has it blocked from the backside, but he gets his own miss. Or rejection, I should say. I always heard basketball coaches say, the block is not important. It's what you do after it that's <laughs> important. Does your team control oh. the ball, or do they get it back and score? Huff, a lot of contact. No call. Teeve, three-pointer. Rims out of there, and it's rebounded by Buse, and now a foul on Christiansen. Wow, Bear River playing really hard. Looked like Huff got away with the charge there a second ago, but Bear River didn't give up on the play. That's, that's a tough thing when you're this age especially, is sometimes you give up on the play, you think the referee's going to call it, and they don't. Oh, so Have to keep playing. Well, and it's easy to look at a bunch of guys that you're looking at the top of there top of their skull thinking, hey, oh, we're way taller than these guys. This is going to be easy. Next thing you know, you look up and your team's losing. So they're going to have to match what Bear Rivers bring, or the Mustangs. One second. Front the shot will not go. And we're tied at 18 at the half. Bear River, Mountain Crest, all knotted up. Summertime. Told you. Summer in a bowl. What? Sweet strawberries, chicken on the grill. Did you do something different in here? Mm. New salads. Nothing captures the feeling of summer like Wendy's new strawberry field salad. Fresh strawberries, bacon, and grilled chicken on a bed of fresh greens. Now that's better. And now kids' meals just $1.99 after four. Speed Queen, the world's largest manufacturer of commercial laundry, builds the same washer and dryer for your home. Life tested for 25 years. Speed Queen components are steel, not plastic. Plus, the longest warranty, lifetime tub, 10-year transmission, plus three years parts and labor. Speed Queen, built in America since 1908. Please come and see us. Thank you. Reasons to follow another's footsteps? Zero. 
things weighing on your mind when running? Zero. Reasons to buy an ultra shoe? Zero. Drop. Zero Drop places your heel and forefoot the same distance from the ground for natural posture, more power, and better running technique. Stress caused from squeezed toes. Zero. Ultra's foot-shaped toe box lets your toes relax, creating a natural platform for more stability, maximum comfort, and improved performance. Connection lost between foot and ground? Zero. Ultra gives you a responsive ride, plus full A-bound cushioning underfoot. Number of other companies that combine zero drop, foot shape, and full cushioning in a single shoe? Zero. Introducing Ultra. Visit ultrazerodrop.com now for free shipping. Wear them for 30 days. If you don't run better, send them back. Zero questions asked. Ultra. Zero drop, zero limits. Mike, you've recently opened up Garlic's Pizza in Smithfield. What can you tell us about that? Oh, it's been so much fun, Matt. We opened about six months ago. We make what we believe is the finest pizza in the valley. We make uh, some specialty pizzas, but then we make the normal pizzas that everyone wants. What, what are some of those specialty pizzas that sh people should keep an eye out for? Maybe come in and try. It's interesting. We are actually helping uh, sponsor the uh, hot tub party tonight, and we brought one. It's called a Venetian. It has pepperoni, salami, sausage, uh, mushrooms, peppers, and onions. It's a great pizza. Pizza in a hot tub doesn't sound too shabby. Now, where can people find you if they want to come try out Garlics? We're located at 869 South Main Street in Smithfield, right across the street from Lee's, right next door to the Dollar Tree. There you go. Go check out Garlic's Pizza in Smithfield. What was that? When in Rome. Or Tuscany, mm -hmm. as in Tuscan chicken on toasted ciabatta. Well, I'm mm. up for that. <laughs> Ciao. Okay, she's not with us. <laughs> <laughs> Introducing Wendy's Tuscan chicken on toasted ciabatta. Lightly breaded chicken with rich garlic and roasted tomato aioli. Now that's better. And we're open late. basketball. Um, I am honored to be the Wendy's Athlete of the Week. My favorite subject in school is probably sports lit and film. Go Stings! My name is Taylor Wolford. I play wing for Mountain Crest Basketball. I'm honored to be Wendy's Player of the Week and my favorite subject in school is English. Go Stings! All tied up at 18 at halftime on the game of the week. And it's brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cash Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Cash Valley Electric, a tradition of excellence since 1915. Mountain Star Cash Valley Hospital, not bigger, just better. Lewiston State Bank, strong and vibrant for over a century. New Smile, keep your teeth with experienced dental care. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Lynn's Audio and Video, Cash Valley's audio and video specialist. Nyman Funeral Home, a family serving your family. Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you've been missing. Cherry Peak Resort, just minutes away to play. Top of Utah Spas, Utah's newest jacuzzi dealer. The Valley Home Store and the Valley Outlet. The best of both worlds, eclectic design at an exceptional price. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff. And the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's television station. We're tied at 18 at halftime on the game of the week. Lee Vaughn is with Mountain Crest head coach. Let's see what the coach has go. to say about the first half. Coach. Had a pretty good lead coming out of the first quarter. Bear River fights back in the second quarter. What would you tell your kids at halftime? Uh, we just got to put the ball in the basket. We think they had some chances. We settled probably for some outside shots, uh, probably too much. Um, so we got to get some find ways to get the ball inside a little bit more and get some inside touches. Talk to me about their zone defense. That really kind of threw them off a little bit. That's, uh, how are you going to break that zone? Uh, 
It's an unconventional defense. Uh, it's not something we haven't seen before, and, and uh, we, we just got to try and free up some of our main guys uh, running through the stuff that we have. Hey, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Back to you, Eric. Well, thanks, Lee. Coach Buck Miller, his team coming out of the gates pretty strong, winning the first period 13-7, to but losing the second quarter 11-5. to Bear River was paced by McCade Mitten, six points, five points for Jordan Sanchez, three for Hartfield. Cole Franck, who averages 14 a game with only two in that first half, and Bridger Buse with two in the first half as well. Jackson Brenchley av averaging 18 a game, and he only had two in the first half. Seven for John Huff, three for Jalen Teeve. Albrechtson scored a bucket, Nethercott scored a bucket, and Christiansen with a free throw. So we start the second half the same way we started the game. All tied up, and the Mustangs trigger inbounds as T brings it across the timeline. And the Mountain Crest student body stands to watch. Levon joining us back up here. Huff baseline jumper, won't go. Rebound flat-footed by Brenchley, and he puts it back. Brenchley was quiet in that first half, Lee. Looks like he took a shot to the lip as well. He's holding his top lip. Might be bleeding a little bit. Both teams' top scorers with only two points in that first half. Franck for Bear River. And Brenchley for Mountain Crest. The Mustangs back out to a two-point advantage. Low-scoring game, Lee. You look at Mountain Crest's games, and they've averaged in the mid to high 50s as far as scoring. And Sanchez answers Bastard. for Jay the Bears. Sanchez. So Coach Hunt for Bear River has to be pleased with his team's defense. Yeah, they're going to pack it right in like they have been most of the game and make Mountain Crest break it or shoot out of it. Well, and early on, it looked like the Mustangs would be able to shoot out of it. They hit two early threes and nothing since as Teeve misses. And Bear River with a chance to take the lead. It would be their first lead of the game. When you talked about it earlier, I think Bear River is happy to take some of the air out of the ball. And Slow this game down a little bit. There's a foul on Huff. And Huff's going to pick up number two. And the foul is on Huff, his second. It's a non shooting foul, so they'll just First team foul trigger it inbounds. You can Old see he just kind of grabbed Mitten. Hartfield chases it out near midcourt and set the offense. Screen for Hartfield, comes off it, firing, it won't go, and it's rebounded by Brenchley. Brenchley looking ahead to Hoff and it's taken away. Well, Walker with good hands, looking at the eyes of Brenchley, seeing that pass coming. Huff was up ahead, would have had an easy lay in, but Walker made a great play to take it away. Here's Mitten. He's been a load down low for the Mustangs. Spins in, little right hand hook, won't go. More of a push shot than a hook, and here comes Brenchley. Brenchley's been on the boards big tonight. He gives it up to Nethercott. He fumbles it out of there, and a foul called out near midcourt. I think Nethercott may have got away with the travel as well. Franck just picked up his second foul. It's the first team foul on the Bears here in this second half. Not a lot of fouls in that first half, neither team getting into the bonus. In fact, Nethercott shooting. Let's see. Bear River had six and uh, Mountain, Mountain Crest, Crest had two. Had, no, they had four. I had them for four. They caught up. Okay, yeah. yeah. They, they called a couple late. <laughs> Another caught with the free throw. He has three points and one more coming. Second free throw too hard. My Nether caught. Down low, it gets away from Franck. Franck's getting frustrated. Albertson, coast to coast, lays it in and softly. Albertson with three points. And that's the Mustang lead at 23-20. Sanchez stops, fades, puts it in. Sanchez with nine. T 
Steve in trouble. Gives it away. Brinsley tries to get it back, but Franks there. Mountain Crest careless with the ball here in the early going of this second half. Blocked by Nethercott. He's long, Lee. <laughs> They've got some post players with some long old arms. Kirby's got long arms, Nethercott. I saw him coming up as a comp player, and he has been good as long as I've known him. How did Mitten get free down low? Nobody That's there to challenge him, and he lays it in. And a 24-23 lead for Bear River. So they've caught in the Mustangs and passed them up now. Very deliberate on offense and tenacious on defense, and that'll get you back in the game. Huff leans in, a lot of contact and a late whistle, and they finally decide to call a block. Well, if that's on Mitten, that's his third. Well, and the call happens late because what the official was waiting for is see if there was an advantage taken, and it did make him miss the shot. So as soon as the shot is missed, Right about oh, here is where the five. whistle's blown. It's, it's third. Very faithful don't like that, but. When you see the replay, you can see Mitten was kind of sliding backwards yeah. a little bit. You don't have to be completely stationary on that call, right? No. You just have to have the position. Have to have position. Established. And if you're moving away from it as it comes to you. That's the, that's the whole point of any foul call is whether or not any advantage was taken. So there's a lot of physical contact. It's not a foul, but it wasn't necessarily an advantage. You know, as. With mu as much disdain as you hold for authority, I can't believe you've officiated. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I didn't say I don't like it when I have it. Oh, it's no fun <laughs> to watch a, a game as a fan with Levon. You yell at the refs and he goes, hey, here's what really he <laughs> Three ball, got it. Wow. Sanchez and Fuego. That's, a, that's 12 for Sanchez. Isn't yes, it, it is. It's a two-point lead now for the Bears. Down low, they go to Kirby. Kirby grabs and puts it in and ties it Boy, up. That was just all strength right there. Almost gets stolen away, but has had both paws on it. You know, with, with big guys, you really teach them to palm that thing, to grip it. Both hands, get your elbows out. Yep. Protect. And don't bring it down where the little guys can reach it. No, my best friend. Growing up, he was a he was a big man like that. And we'd hang out, and he'd always carry a basketball around with him, and he'd say, "Just try to hit this out of my hands <laughs> when I'm not looking, and then even when I am looking." His hands were as big as the ball. That's not fair. Another turnover by the Mustangs, and they get it right back as Huff in the right place at the right time. Brenchley goes Brenchley down. Out of control. Well, he kind of looked like he might have turned his ankle, but he gets up okay. Brenchley right. frustrated, can't pick up that foul. No, he grabbed. Walker, didn't he? Yep. They didn't see it. 27 all, our score. Two and a half to play in the third. And a ball game that's been tight. Mountain Crest's biggest lead was six. Bear River's biggest lead, two. And that was just a moment ago. No five-second call. The guys are stepping off of him. Yeah. Bear River's just been content to slow this game down and work it around and figure, well, we'll wait for the defense to make a mistake. Now Coach Hunt tells him to attack. Franck, three from the corner. Got it! Boy. Five for Franck and a three-point three bear lead. Oh, that offense is starting to look like an Ivy League offense there for a second. <laughs> Well, they pulled it out of there. Mount Chris kind of sat back. And they found the opening. Can that three. Brenchley took his eyes off the ball to look inside for a minute. Gets it back. Gets in the lane, and he'll go to the line. You know, he's kind of a whirling dervish as he goes in there. and You know he does that on purpose to try to draw a foul because if you can get to the line, you get three points. Yep. Plus your opponent gets fouls on him, so... If you can get him called. Yeah, he's tough to guard. But Mountain Crest having a really hard time with the floating zone that Bear River has out there going back and forth trying to break that zone. They've got to get quicker on their passes. The ball is always faster than the defense yeah. if you can be quick and think ahead. And we talked about Brenchley and struggling with his free throws and shooting a little bit last year. 
He's perfect from the line tonight with one more coming. See if we jinxed him. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, who are you talking to? Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> I don't talk to anybody anymore. Nobody listens. So. I have teenage kids. You got a house full of girls. That's right. Same here. Two of them are married. All of a sudden, they're way smarter. Hello. Really? Oh, yeah. I hope to have my last one married off in about 10 to 12 years. Then I'm moving to Aruba. <laughs> I'm moving to Alaska. There you go. Oh, nice Sanchez wow. with the baseline drive. And he's got some words for the officials, thinking he got fouled as well. 14 for Sanchez. He's got nine here in this third period. Three-point lead again for Bear River. Huff sets the pick. Nowhere to go for Brenchley, so he kicks it back out to Adams. What a tough rotating zone. Huff, baseline jumper. Rims out of there, and it's rebounded by Franck. And that's the other thing. Mount Chris with a decided height advantage. Getting but it's one and done on the offensive end. Yeah, they're getting worked on the boards. Ten seconds left in the quarter. This one knocked away by Huff, and Teeve comes up with it. He's got time. Teeve steps around his man. It won't go. No whistle and no bucket. And Bear Rivers come all the way back from a six-point deficit in the first half to take a 32-29 lead into the fourth quarter. You're watching the Game of the Week on the Valley Channel. Hiram Ericles, and along with Lee Vaughn, this Mountain Crest takes on Bear River here in the, I think it's the final warm-up game before region play starts all around the state. And you know, speaking of region, Lee Iverson, yeah, let's see, Mount, well, Mountain Crest has they got Ogden, Ogden next, next week. week. That's their region. Yep, and then Box Elder, Bonneville, Logan. Uh, speaking of uh, region, I've seen so far this season, I've seen Bonneville, I've seen Roy, I've seen Box Elder, and I've seen Skyview play. This is my first time seeing Mountain Crest play tonight. I haven't seen Logan yet, and haven't seen Ogden, but I can tell you. And I think Logan's the best of the bunch. <laughs> that Bonneville is gonna have a tough year. Roy has a lot of seniors, but they're better football players than basketball players, but they're very athletic. That makes for a lot of fouls. They're gonna give people problems, but they really miss Bracott Chapman, who's getting lots of playing time with the University of Utah right now. Um, Box Elder has a lot of talent, but they're really struggling early. And they're, they've fallen in love with a, a perimeter game. Have the bees. Here's Sanchez, 14 points to his name. Skyview, I think, looks really tough, but they are a little inconsistent as Franck extends the lead. Wow. 34-29 for Bear River now. And now we're looking at Mount Crest for the first time, and they're in a dogfight against a 3A team. Pretty, pretty well coached, well disciplined 3A team, actually. Yeah, they uh, they finished tied for the region. They, they got a piece of the region title last year in Region 11. I think, I think it was they got beaten in the quarters or the first round by, by Morgan, I think, who was the eventual 3A champ. Yeah. Oh, Kirby and Mitten are really going at it underneath. Kirby threw an elbow at Mitten, and Mitten threw one back, and Mitten's going to get rung up for his fourth foul. Foul is on number five, McKay. He's going to come out. Walker's coming in. It was getting a little nasty down there in the paint. 
when Brentshaw just cannot find a crease. Uh-uh. They're paying attention to him, aren't they? In low, they go to Kirby. Kirby against the double. Kicks it back out. Three way short by Schwab. Rebounded by Bear River. Mountain Crest again. Size advantage, but they're not getting a lot of second chance point opportunities here in this second half. Franck, free throw line jumper. Good. He averages 14 a game. He had two at the half. He's got nine. Seven points. That's the lead, and that's the point total for Franck. Well, Mountain Crest just holding the ball way too long. Nethercott as they bring the double and triple. Kirby over the back of Franck. A foul's Kirby on Kirby. Misses from in, in close, and Kirby's not happy. He doesn't have anybody mad at by himself because he airballed a one foot layup. That's probably who he's mad at. Yeah. Take a look. Missed right there. Missed right here. After it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's just good position by Franck. Mountain Crest getting a little frustrated. Getting a lid on the basket for the Mustangs. Bear River's getting in their head. And Sanchez, a man with the ball, has done most of the damage. They're just so quick. Sanchez with 14. He had nine of those 14 in the third quarter. Hartfield with the bounce pass to Frank and one. Well, the Mustangs have got to regroup, and they're trying to do that on the floor now. Brenchley calls them all together as Frank gets a hoop in the arm. Fellas on Tanner Schwab. Schwab with the foul. for Bear River. He hits 12 for Franck. He had two at the break. Brenchley just can't get going. Nethercott down low. Left hand shot goes. So finally, the Mustangs get a bucket. They've been stuck at 29 for a while. 30 second timeout. And a timeout taken on the floor. Good timeout called by Coach Buck Miller. Yeah. To get those kids' heads back in the game. You got a shot now. You got, you're down eight points with 523 to go. But that takes great defense and excellent execution on the offensive end. They've been outscored 7-2 to two here in the fourth. They were outscored 14-11 in the third. So basically, since, since the start of this second half, They've been outscored 21-13, and that's the difference. An eight-point lead for Bear River. And a Bear River bench with every bucket. They're coming up out of the bench, off of the bench like it's a state tournament game. And you know when you're a 3A school playing against a 4A school, that's what you want to do. You want to go in there and play with a little bit of chip on your shoulder. Big, uh, big boost potentially winning this game before you go into your Region 3 schedule. I don't know in basketball if, region there's, 11. if there's as much difference as there is in football with the depth that you get no. being a bigger school. I think you can find solid top fives enough that three A's can compete with four A's. Mountain Crest coming out, going to a little bit of pressure. We'll see if they start pressuring and try to make Bear River do something with the ball besides take the air out of it. Buse Huff pitches it out, and Huff picks up his third. Foul number three on John Huff. Well, I think Huff's a little disappointed he got a foul there. It was a foul, but, you know, barely tapped him. If you're going to foul somebody, you might as well do it. That's Frog, nice and he gets it blocked. Is that Nethercock? Yep. So the Mustangs with the defensive stop that they haven't been able to get. Brenchley off the glass at him. Wow. Let's see if he goes to work. That was outside the box on the backboard. That was a long That's bank. Brenchley. Brenchley now with eight. Oh, Franck gets free underneath. Boy, Nethercott's got to make that Hold break. On. Or just stay back. You, you got to make it or not. That's an all or nothing play. 
Franck with 14, he's got nine here in the third, and Schwab has it poked away by Hartfield. Sanchez, block, foul. Foul's gonna be on Huff, blocked by Brenchley. Huff just picked up number four. He'll have to sit down, he's got nine points. Usually you'd say, well, that's, uh, now they lose some size, but that hasn't made a difference tonight. They nope. haven't been able to use their size. Doesn't matter then? Uh, no, that's right. Sanchez with 15. Sanchez with 16. Well, he got it go now, down by 10 of 419, and the clock running. They yeah. had it down to six, and they've turned it over. Just so hesitant on that pass. That zone is giving them trouble all night long. They want to get inside, but they just haven't been able to. Teeth fakes the three, kicks it out to Brenchley. Brenchley. Three on the way, no good. Rebounded by Nethercott. Nethercott can't put it back in, but he'll go to the line. And he had to fight for that rebound. He was the <coughs> only Mustang around four beat Bears. <laughs> Boy, just can't overstate the hustle of this Bear River team. They're playing great defense and getting after everything. There is no such thing as an uncontested shot if you're Mountain Crest. Five points for Nethercott, and now he has six. Nethercott hits them both. Seven points for Kai Nethercott. Maybe a little more aggressive on that pressure and pinch somebody against the side. They're just kind of floating out there, token pressure. Walker back to Sanchez and he hits. It's backside. It's been Jordan the Sanchez. rotation has been missing yep. defensively for Mountain Crest. They're getting killed on backside plays. Sanchez, I think it'd have to be your player of the game for Bear River. And this one into the backcourt. Another turnover for Mountain Crest. You know, I usually keep the turnover stats. I didn't start keeping it from the beginning of the mm -hmm. game tonight. And I wish I would have now. I know Mountain Crest would be. I think, I think Mountain Crest is glad, glad you didn't. Yeah. They've just thrown the ball all Mountain over the Crest gym here in the second Crest. half. Things being equal here, uh, the player of the game will be Jordan Sanchez. 27 points so far in this second half. Sanchez has what, uh, 14 now? Yeah. Clock's still running in a timeout. <laughs> it ran for uh, it ran for a good 10 or 12 seconds. Yep. It's that hometown cooking again. Who <laughs> <laughs> wants to end Wait. it? Somebody, need, they need to have a meeting about hometown cooking. No, that's not how you do it. This is it backwards? Quit it. So we talked about what region it might look like for Mountain Crest in two years, but how about next year, going into 5A? And they're going to be in that region with Northridge. Northridge, Clearfield. Weber, and Clearfield, and Fremont. That'll be an interesting region. It'll be a pretty good region, and uh, it's been Region 1 up until now. And well, I think that might still be the region name of it, but it, it will, uh, Skyview and Mountain Crest will go to that. We'll be doing all of those games, and you know, you know what we do before each and every game? We gorge ourselves <laughs> with pizza. The factory pizzas. Chicken. It, it, uh, it's right below Gia's there. On, South Main on the west side of the road there. And you're coming up the hill, and I'll tell you what, they have it's probably the best crust in the valley. And everything that's on it's dang good too. But they provide yeah, but us with a, a pile of pizzas before each and every game. And so if you haven't checked them out, go in and say hello to oh, Fernando oh, and oh, say, oh, hey, oh. we heard about you on the Valley Channel. Hook us up. And he'll get you some great pizza. Foul on Mountain Crest. From Brenchley. As Brenchley. 
picks up his first. That's 16 fouls. Next one will be in the bonus for Bear River. And that's probably what Mountain Crest is trying to do. Be aggressive and foul if you have to and see if you can't take it away. Eventually, they're going to have to start putting them at the free throw line. Oh. Again, back door. Oh. Somebody gets free and it's wrong. How do, you, how do you leave a scorer like that all alone? Franck has gotten over his frustration from earlier in the game. He's got 16. Ian Sanchez have been a wrecking crew. Well, I'm going to track down Jordan Sanchez. He has 14 points on the night. More than that. He had five at the half. Two, four, six, nine, 14, 16, 18 points. 18, wow. For Sanchez. Well, he'll be the Valley Channel player of the game if things remain as they are. And you know, it's not like he's been you know, taking 20 footers and sinking them because he's unconscious. He's been shooting free throws, yeah. short jumpers. He's just been getting free everywhere. This one kicked out of bounds. I'll go track him down. All right, 214 to play in the ball game. Bear River by 12, looking to, I guess you'd call it an upset where they're a 3 a team, but you know, they're eight and four. They're a good ball team. Mountain Crest with their first game after a long layoff, and I think it showed in their inability to protect the basketball. Franck all the way in and a blocking foul. And one for Franck. Franck averages 14 a game. He only had two at the half. He has 16 in the second half, so he has 18 as well. That's the seventh team foul. Schwab comes in and Teve sits down. Franck hits the free throw. He's perfect four for four from the free throw line. 14 points for Schwab here, or excuse me, Schwab Franck here in this fourth quarter. Sanchez has four. Franck with 14. Nethercom down the lane, tries to find Huff, and it's taken away by Sanchez. Sanchez to Walker. Walker backs it out. We're under two minutes to play. And a foul by Brenchley. Foul is on Brenchley. So Brenchley picks up his second. And Richard Buse. Buse will go to the line. Buse hits the first. Turnover. Walker climbs the ladder to go get it, and a foul by Schwab. It wasn't Walker, that was Buse that went and got it. Fellows on Tanner Schwab. Tristan Hartfield. Hartfield will shoot Bear free throws. River. One and one. As Bear River just extends the lead. Their lead now by 16. They led by three at the quarter break. It was tied at the half. Mountain Crest led by six after one. Brenchley hits. Basket Jackson for Brenchley. Brenchley with 10. He has six points, eight points here in the second half is Brenchley. Timeout, Time Mountain Crest, full timeout. His teammates all combined have 11. So 11 points for the entire Mountain Crest team. Outside of Brenchley, he had six. Eight, excuse me. So it's 19 total points, so Mountain Chris hasn't even scored 20 points here in this second half. Eight points here in this fourth quarter. 20 to eight, they've been outscored by Bear River Mountain Crest. Bear River took the lead. They extended it out to about a 10 point lead and then Mountain Crest cut it down to six. Then they turned it over a couple of times. Bear River took advantage. Be a little bit.
Hunter bus ride back over the pass at Beaver Dam for the Bears. 118 to play. You know, Bear River did a lot of this with their big man, Mitten, getting into foul trouble and not being able to play here in this second half. He's having a lot of trouble with fouls underneath with Kirby. And, you know, he was really going to work down low. He, foul, he gets in foul trouble. He only had eight points as he sat down, but they really didn't have uh, an answer for him early. Bear River playing small ball because that's really the only choice they have and doing just fine against the bigger team. Hartfield's shot goes. He's got another one. He hits both. Hartfield with five points on the night. Wrenchley uses the huff screen, kicks it out. The Teave, his three from the corner is good. Three ball, Jaden Teave. Teave hit a three in the first quarter, now a three here in the fourth. And a charge on Sanchez. But Jordan Sanchez. Jordan Sanchez. That's his first foul of the game. The Bear River by 13 at 4, 53 to 40 with 104 to play. Adams gets it into Teeve. Teeve crosses the timeline. One minute. Kicks One it to minute. the corner to Albrechtson. Now Teeve looking at the three. Leans in, misses, rebound, tap goes by Huff. Basket John Huff. 11 for Huff as he's into double figures. He averages 10 points per game. And it's an 11 point Bear River lead. Mount Crest will have to foul. There's only 52 seconds left. And Bear River has been more than proficient at the free throw line. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve free throws. And I have them as 12 for 12. Mountain Crest with 14 free throws. They've been almost equally as proficient. They're 11 of 14 in the free throw line. So both, both teams shooting well from the charity strike. But Bear River shooting better from the field. And again, taking better care of the basketball than the Mustangs. So did Bear River want to, Bear River called another timeout. Just a 30 second timeout. We'll have all the region action coming up for you as we move along in our schedule. Mountain Crest against Logan, Logan against Skyview, Skyview against Logan, Mountain Crest against Skyview, everybody against everybody. We've got a, I think a couple of box elder contests mixed in there as well. The local Valley teams with playing box elder. Mountain Crest with the pressure. They've got to hurry and get it in. It was close to 10 second count. Five second count, excuse me. Huff with the steal. A Mountain Crest desperately trying to make this a ball game. Huff shot short and Franck with the rebound. It's taken away. If Huff hits that, it's an eight point game. With about 40 seconds left. Crazier things have happened, but now Schwab picks up the foul, and Frank will go shoot two more. And the Bears are perfect from the free throw line tonight. Frank is four for four. He's got 19 points. Now he has 20. He scored more than 
Jordan Sanchez, but Sanchez did his damage in the third quarter where Bear River pulled away. Finally took the lead and it was Sanchez that spurred that. He had nine points in that third period. Nine of his team's 14. Frog misses the second. So the first miss of the night for Bear River from the line, 13 of 14. Here's another steal as Mountain Crest turns it over yet again. And Adams fouls Hartfield. And for Bear River, you know, they've got seven oh, sophomores on their roster, their varsity roster, seven sophomores. They've got four juniors and four seniors. Hartfield shot is good. They start as Bear River, three seniors in Frank Mitten and Sanchez. Hartfield and Buse are juniors. Both free throws by Hartfield. Mountain Crest, they've got five sophomores on their varsity roster, six juniors and six seniors. They start four seniors and a sophomore in Branchland. There's a takeaway by Schwab. Four seconds left, he lays it and it won't go in and neither will Huff's tip in attempt and a 56 to 42 win for Bear River as they come in to hire him and shock the stags. We'll take a break and be back with our player of the game, Jordan Sanchez after this time. Jordan Sanchez, Valley Channel player of the game. Congratulations, first of all, on a great win tonight. Uh, yeah, thanks. You know, our team played good. It was all of us. We all contributed tonight. Well, you came out 13 to 7 was the score after the first quarter, but you really lit things up. You scored 18 points tonight to really propel your team in that third quarter and to go ahead and keep the lead. What did your coach tell you at halftime? Um, keep shooting, make an extra pass, you know, keep moving the ball, hit the open guy. That's all. That's all we do. Talk to me about your defense. You guys played great defense tonight, that rotate, that floating zone back and forth. Really, how did that work against Mountain Crest? We saw it, but tell me what your thoughts. Um, it doesn't work unless we work hard. That's, that's what Coach teaches us, and that's what we do. So, you know, that's what we do, work hard and make it work. Hey, congratulations. Good luck in your next games. Yeah, thanks. Back to you, Eric. Nice job, man. 56-42, the Bears win on the game of the week tonight. It was brought to you by Icon Health and Fitness, changing lives with fitness innovation. Wendy's of Cash Valley, it's way better than fast food, it's Wendy's. Cash Valley Electric, a tradition of excellence since 1915. Mountain Star Cash Valley Hospital, not bigger, just better. Lewiston State Bank, strong and vibrant for over a century. New smile, keep your teeth with experienced dental care. Cam Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Lynn's audio and video, Cash Valley's audio and video specialist. Nyman Funeral Hall, a family serving your family. Cash Valley Hearing and Audiology, bring back what you've been missing. Cherry Peak Resort, just minutes away to play. Top of Utah Spas, Utah's newest jacuzzi dealer. The Valley Home Store and the Valley Outlet, the best of both worlds, eclectic design at an exceptional price. The Logo Shop, we logo stuff and the Valley Channel, Cash Valley's television station. For Levon, the guys in the truck behind the cameras doing the hard work. I'm Eric Olson saying we'll see you next time on the Valley Channel.